everyone, welcome back to Sura TV. I'm Lartak Patayo, usual host with the most. Today we have Stambit Bank back to um, our show. Today we're going to be talking about savings and we actually have uh, Mr. Wabo Moswate. He's actually the head of secured lending at Stambit. We're going to be talking about savings, a very important um, topic for us to actually focus on. We, we need to be prioritizing um, savings. How can we actually do that? We're going to be having a conversation about the importance um, of savings and what actually um, kind of savings accounts um, we can tap into um, at Stambic as well that will you know, make it easier for us to prioritize savings in, 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 in our lives. Welcome to Suri TV, Wabo. Thank you very much for having me, Lorato. It's quite a pleasure. This topic is uh, very dear to our hearts. So excited to be here today. Yes, all right. Now, welcome back. We wel were wel welcoming um, Stambik back uh, to um, our Suri TV. We're really excited uh, about this um, partnership. And we hope, you, uh, as a viewer, you are also able to benefit from these conversations that um, during these interesting times, we really need to be prioritizing um, saving and um, investing as well as you know reducing our debt as far as possible. But today, like we said, we're going to be talking about um, saving um, uh, in, in our lives. So about, why, why is the culture of saving so important um, um, as Stembic Bank? Why is it uh, important for you guys? Thank you very much again uh, for having us. So from, from our side, savings is important because of three aspects that we strongly believe in. So the first one is around saving as a foundation for wealth generation. So why are we saying that? You find that if people save or put money aside, they create capital. This capital, it's money that they can use to start their business, whether it's a small business or it's a big business. As the business grows and it scales, they're able to generate wealth for themselves whilst making a difference in their customers' lives. The next aspect uh, around wealth generation is the issue of having enough capital to invest mm. in cash-generating assets like real estate. If you are going to purchase yeah. properties, whether it's a plot, whether it's a, it's a, it's a house, uh, you need mm. to have money for the costs, right? And we know, all of us know that in the long run, property has the ability to generate cash in terms of rentals, in terms of even the equity in the property itself. Number two, uh, that's important to us in savings, is the issue of emergency funds. As you are yeah. aware, and most of us are aware, we are living in very uncertain times in COVID, businesses are closing down, people are losing yeah. jobs, even life itself is not guaranteed. So an emergency fund is very critical. So we we, we, we sort of uh, encourage our clients to save over the lifetime when they're working, we encourage them to save at least 50% of their annual income. Why is this important? You know, if you suddenly lose a job, you need money to sustain your existing lifestyle. You need money yeah. to sustain or even keep your assets. Uh, most people who don't have emergency funds, the moment they lose a job, you know, that life yeah. uh, goes into turmoil. I mean, they lose their house. Now you have to take your kids to a different school. Now you don't even have money to put food on the table. So emergency fund is very critical for us. The last part, mm -hmm. which we think is very important for us, is mental health. We know that people who have financial problems have financial stress, stress. And you find that financial stress in the long run, it leads to anxiety, it leads to yeah. depression. Yeah. People who are depressed and have anxiety can't perform at work. They're always absent uh, at work. In extreme cases, some people have actually uh, resorted to extreme measures such as committing suicide because you know they've got financial troubles. So having savings gives you that peace of mind uh, knowing that, you know, mm -hmm. if there are financial ch challenges that you are faced with, uh, you have a bit of cash saved up that you can use to combat uh, those challenges. That's actually a, quite an important one. What is your observation on the culture of savings in Botswana? What do you think we have a culture? What kind of culture of savings do you think we have in, in our country? Okay. So thanks for that. So so I'll start by looking at the data that's that's before us. 
uh, when you yeah. look at the data, the financial data that's available, it's public, publicly available to everyone. Uh, you find that um, we have a sort of a consuming rather than a savings culture. I'll just give you an example. Yeah. Total loans and advances to households or individuals is currently sitting at 43 billion in the market. And total savings and deposits that individuals hold in this market is currently sitting at 17 billion, which leads us to believe that, you know, the culture so far is more inclined towards consuming than saving. What leads to that? Mm -hmm. we, we, we normally link it to societal norms, uh, as well as beliefs that uh, we have in the market. We know in the society that we live, we, we live in, uh, your status yeah. in society is viewed in terms of uh, where do you live, uh, or what's the value yeah. of your property, uh, what type uh -huh. of car do you drive, is it expensive, where do you send mm -hmm. your, 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 your kids to school, uh, what type of yeah. clothes do you wear. So you find that some people are able to afford uh, this lifestyle that are there, but other people jump through financial loops and hoops in order to appear uh, as if they're in those social brackets. And you find that this is where financial mismanagement, this is where over-indebtedness comes in. But but what, what I can say is that we're seeing a shift uh, with, with the uprise of the millennials, with, with the uncertainties that come with COVID. Uh, most people yeah. now are raising savings. Most people are now investing uh, in programs mm -hmm. such as these, they want to become financially literate. So the, the, the mm -hmm. savings culture is indeed improving day by day. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So now that we have actually observed um, the savings culture and the importance of it, I would like us to actually now um, how one can create a savings plan. You know, I want us to talk about that. Let's Let's have the solutions in place now, you know, give people an idea or our viewers an idea of, okay, we hear you. We need to prioritize saving and not, um, you know, pretend and, and um, live like the Joneses, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses. Uh, you don't have to do that. Just live within your means. This is basically what Wabori is saying. But now let's talk about the, the, the culture of saving. And now let's talk about the tips on what one can do you know, to have a savings plan. Let, let, let's, let's talk about that. What's the first step that where, what, where one needs to start? Okay. So thanks, mm. thanks, thanks for that question. So our view is that uh, the first step uh, in creating sort of a savings plan is, is, yeah. is setting your goals. I mean, anything worth, worth pursuing starts with goals. So mm. financial goals for us are very critical. Your financial goals need to be set. They have to be clear, mm. they have to be measurable, they have to be achievable, they have to be time-bound. So financial yeah. goals can be simple things such as, I want to pay off my debt by end of year. It can be things mm. such as, I want to have multiple or two streams of income uh, yeah. in the next two months or in the next three years. It's up to you. Yeah. It can be, it can be I want to save up 10000 so that I can start this side hustle that I've, that I've been thinking mm. about. So that's the first step. Step number two, mm. we now move into execution. Now you have all these nice goals that you've come up with. Now you start yes. the execution. The execution, in our view, starts with a simple assessment, like uh, understanding what are your expenditures and what are your incomes. I mean, most people right now do not understand uh, their financial flows. You find that most of us, uh, we run out of money before our next paycheck. So under execution, the first step would be list all your expenses, list all your all your incomes. Then just quickly analyze, understand areas where you you know you you might be overspending and you don't need to. There are certain luxuries that most of us spend a lot of money on, but we don't necessarily have to. So once you understand that budget of yours, you draft it. Um, then after drafting it, you come up with sort of aspirations to say, for me to achieve my financial objectives, which things do I need to cut down on? Do I need to cut mm -hmm. down on a particular expense? Do I need to increase my income? So it depends. Mm -hmm. then, then once we, yeah. we have all of that in place, we have where now you have to hold yourself accountable. You have set this mm -hmm. financial goals, you have this budget, at least on a monthly basis, take uh, an hour to just assess where am I? Am I overspending? Am I within budget? Am I saving? How far am I in terms of achieving my financial goals? So that's those are the three steps that we feel 
individuals might need to focus on. Yes. So, so Wabo, let's let's talk about that step on um, on basically assessing your your expenditure monthly, right? Um, how can one assess the expenditure monthly? Would it be maybe best to print out your bank statement from your previous month? check out what you actually expend because sometimes you know you don't actually remember what you're spending your money on you know uh I, 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 you know most of us to be honest you'll find out hey, Lahore, what month are we on now august you don't even remember what you spent your money on um, in july you know so how can one check would, would maybe printing a bank statement to check or okay where did my money gonna now you're drawing what you call uh, your your income statement. You are checking yourself a personal income statement. Or okay, when my salary went into the account, where did the money go? Would that be the first step to check to start? Can it Absolutely. So as you've rightly put it, the first step. Yeah. Uh, and I think banking has made people's lives easier. You find that currently. Most people have access to internet banking. In that internet banking, you've got your statements. And narrations yeah. nowadays are, are very good. You are able to see uh, your salary coming in. You are able to see where you actually swiped money. You are able to yeah. see uh, if you have withdrawn uh, money at an ATM. And also with internet banking, things are nicer in that you can export your statement to Excel. So that's, that's the yeah. first step. Have a look at yeah. that statement, categorize your expenditures, uh, then from there understand where you're spending money. Uh, back in the days, yeah. things used to be a bit difficult. You had to print the statement, but now you can view it online. You can export it. Yeah. And one thing that technology has done for us is that you find that now we've got all this lots of fancy budgeting tools and apps that you can download and be able to capture uh, your budget on a monthly basis and also do a sort of a trend analysis. So technologies uh, is, is easily or is making our life easier in terms of managing certain aspects of our lives. Yeah, okay. I mean, th th I think that's really the first step. And then also looking at, if you're looking at exactly what you're spending on, you can actually look for, okay, buying fast food. You know, I've spent a lot of money on buying fast food. Um, now, when you're actually looking at it, then you can look at things like maybe you spend a little too much on your lunches, you know, those everyday lunches, you're probably swiping a lot at a particular fast food place that you probably need to, uh, you know, reduce. Just start there. Start on the things that you can do without, you know. And, and I'm pretty sure we can do without buying lunches every day versus packing um, lunches to work. I got it. Definitely. Yeah. So let's, let's go to the other pointers now of creating our savings plan. You've mentioned that uh, basically we set our goals and then we reflect for, okay, what are we spending our money on so that we can reduce the expenditure, you know, and avail the money to, to basically um, save. Kind of this is what you're saying, or avail the money to achieve our goals. So what, what's the next step? What, what, what's the next step on, on what we can do to create our savings plan? Yeah, so I, I think one once you have set up the savings plan, the mm. most critical thing is to understand some of the habits that you, you need to develop in order to ensure that you stick to the savings plan. I'll just give you an example. Uh, you yeah. find that I, I gave an example earlier that, you know, some people or most people, you know, they find ourselves they find themselves depleting their salary before the next paycheck, and that can be yeah. traced uh, back to our ex ex expenditure behaviors or how we actually use mm -hmm. money. So the tips I'll give to people would be spend spend less than you earn. Make sure that in order for you to save, you 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 live on a tight budget. I'm not saying that uh, deprive yourself of nice things. All I'm saying is that spend less than than uh, what you actually earn so that you live within your means. Other yeah. things that you can look at is that automate your savings. Uh, yeah. I'll just give you an yeah. example. Right now, if if I haven't automated my savings, I haven't set up a stop order, it's going to be very mm -hmm. difficult for me to every month discipline myself to transfer a bit of money mm -hmm. from my, my current account. To my savings. So automating yeah. can be quite good. Something always uh, comes up. So if you don't automate, something, something always comes, comes up. up. That's, That's what, what you mean. mean. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and the other thing that I think we, we can look at uh, as Botswana is that, you know, I think it comes to, to sort of our mindset. I would say we mm. need to start developing a producer mindset instead of a consumer. A consumer mindset says, when I have a bit of mm. money, how can I spend it all? A producer yeah. mindset says, you know, I've got this money. How can I use this money to make more? So you find yeah. that uh, most people who are actually creating wealth have got that mindset. When they take a loan, they look they look at it from, okay, I'm taking this money. How can I use this money to make more? Uh, the other thing I think we can look at, it's breaking down your savings. Uh, this can mm. be done in, in, in such a way that you break down your savings into two. First, you have mm. that emergency fund I talked about. You put money away for a rainy day or for unexpected uh, financial circumstances. Number two would be have savings that you can use to take a risk. I mean, starting a business, for example, doing X, Y, Z. Uh, it doesn't help yeah. to just pile cash uh, and not do something with it. So my suggestion yeah. would be let's break it down into two. Some of the money that yeah. we save, let's take risks to create wealth. Some of the money, let's mm-hmm. save for a rainy day. So so as, 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 as I was touching on, uh, when you, you do your savings, uh, break them into two. Uh, there's mm-hmm. where you create that em- emergency fund that we talked about earlier, because you never know. Mm-hmm. There might be certain financial situations that need you to, you know, dip into that emergency fund. The second part uh, is saving uh, to generate wealth. You can't just pile cash and save for nothing. So there has to be a savings that you can use to risk. You can risk by starting a business. You can risk by investing in cash generating assets. So savings has to have two purposes, an emergency yeah. and also building up reserves to generate wealth in the process as well. Okay. All right. Any other habits that we need to uh, instill in ourselves to have the plan on? Okay. So so yeah. the, other, the other most important, I think this is uh, the overarching and most critical thing uh, it's your mm-hmm. mindset so what we encourage people to do is, is is develop a producer mindset instead of a consumer mindset because what a mm-hmm. consumer mindset uh, says is that you know when you have money if you're a consumer you find creative ways of spending it uh, and mm-hmm. you know you don't actually generate any value but if you're a producer and you have a producer mindset when you find money you think about how can i use this money to make more when you take loans, uh-huh. you think about how do I take these loans to make more? But but how do you do that? How do you switch that mindset, Wabo? That now it's not as simple as me listening to Wabo and saying, oh, okay, I need a producer mindset. No, it, it, it doesn't happen as, as easy as that. Where can one start to switch their mindset to be a producer mindset versus a consumer mindset? Thank you very much for that. I think that's very critical. The yeah. starting point is it's 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 you acknowledging that you know from a financial perspective, uh, you might yeah. be limited and you need to develop. You need to learn. So platforms yeah. such as this, people such as yourself, even books can help you understand how money works. Only when you understand how money works and how finances works, can you now understand how do you instead of depleting your financial resources, how do you now use money to generate more value? So personal development and and taking advice from people who have done it before uh, and also self-help books can help you in seeing the world from a different perspective. Absolutely. Reading actually helps. Read the books about money management and how to invest. Uh, It actually really switches your mindset. And also the company you keep, Wabo, um, the company you keep, is it a producer com- uh, the company, uh, you know, your friends, basically, the, your, your, your people that you hang around most of your time? Are they producer or are they consumer mindset? That's another thing that we need to re- remember. You're always, I think you are, you are um, a character of the five, almost the minimum, the five people that you hang around most. So we really need to also observe who we surround ourselves with. Are we surrounded by spenders or are we surrounded by um, savers, basically, right? That, that, that contributes to the mindset as well? No, it does, definitely. Like you're saying, yeah, but the company you become the company you keep. If you want to yeah. be financially independent, you want to be better at your finances, seek out people who, who are actually... Uh, doing what you want to become and, and, and stick around with them, learn from them. 
if you yeah. if you have this ambitions but you have this group that you are keeping you know the group mm-hmm. think might limit uh, what what you can possibly achieve so the company you keep is very important as well yeah okay now well, but let's talk about i don't have We've talked about reducing, you know, your costs, just in case you feel like, you know, my, my budget, it, I have nothing to save, you know, um, but, you know, you can reduce. We've already talked about reducing of expenses. How else can one, uh, you know, create money to, to save? Do, do you think maybe having an extra income uh, could, could be that? How can one create an extra income for themselves? Let's just give um, the viewer an idea so that they have uh, some sort of um, cushion to be able to save and put money aside. Okay, no, great. Yeah. I think that's that's a very great perspective. So, yeah. so, so how, how we see it, so it's not just about cutting expenses, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like you, you rightfully put it, it's about also creating multiple streams of income. I think yeah. when most people think of a business, they think about this huge animal <laughs> Uh, that yeah. you know that needs a lot of a lot of intellect that needs a lot of other things, but what we are yeah. seeing post COVID is that people are, have started uh, selling all sorts of things. You know, from as little as whatever price, people are creating multiple streams of income by selling, by starting uh, small businesses, by by also sharing their skill sets. People have got skill sets that are needed by other people, so that can be yeah. also a, an incredible source of of additional revenue. So. Having multiple streams of income is very important. You know, there's talk about if you are not having at least five multiple streams of income, you know, you're in trouble. So I I think most of us need to now get creative and find those multiple sources of income because it's it's, it's, it's the pinnacle of wealth generation. Yeah. Okay. I think another way also to, you know, you know, have some extra income, you can sell the things you don't need. Maybe you don't need the two cars that you're driving or the three cars that are packed in the yard, sell two and be left with one, you know, um, sell that expensive car, get a cheaper one so that you can clear that debt. It just creates more income for you instead of paying 10,000 pula towards a car, then you just try sell it to pay it off and the, the 10,000 pula is for you, you know, and then get a cheaper car. If it's really that tight for you, you know, that people that can afford it, like you've mentioned, um, Wabo, but if you can't afford it and it's really tough for you, reduce as much as you can so that you can sacrifice things that you can do without versus now sacrificing your children's education versus your quality of life, etc. You can do without other things. Yeah. So what, what, let's now start saving. Now we have created this, uh, we've cut down the costs, we've switched our mindset, we have the goals, um, you know, we are selling, we, we find other streams of income. Now let's talk about the strategy of saving, Wabo. Um, where does one start now? Let, let's, let's start saving. You know, what, what, what is the minimum one should save into an emergency account? And, um, and, and, and also the accumulation account where now we want to accumulate for opening that business or accumulate to invest, right? Where does one start? So we have the money. I'm sitting with money now, um, excess money. Where, where do you think I should start with my income? If my income is now an extra 10,000, where do I start? Yeah. Okay. So, so we've talked about... Um... The process of a uh, savings plan, I think we've, we've, we've touched on that. We've talked about the tips. Uh, now that you have all of that in place, the most important thing is now to find a financial partner. I'll just give you an example. We at Stambic, we've got all sorts of tools uh, that one can use to facilitate their savings. Uh, and the tools are different, uh, really. So I'll just give you an example. We've got people who want to save, but have want to have that flexibility of accessing their funds quicker. Uh, we've got mm-hmm. uh, our Koketsu savings account, which you can open for a small amount of just 100 pula, and you can save uh, whichever way you want. It does not have a management fee. Uh, it doesn't have any deposit fees. You can put money into the account whichever way. You've got uh, unlimited SMS less from, from a balance as small as 100 pula, you earn very high interest rates, uh, which, is, which, is, which can be good uh, for customers. Uh, you can access the funds, one free withdrawal per quarter, uh, which yeah. gives you that flexibility. You've got people who have now received a lump sum. I've received 5,000 from nowhere. I don't know what to do with it. 
Uh, we've got term deposits, uh, which are your fixed deposits that you can fix money in. Uh, the tenors start from one to about 24 months, so you can fix the money and put it away and forget about it while as, while earning a lot, a lot of interest. So it depends on the needs uh, of the client, but saving uh, needs to be also secure. You can't put the money under your pillow. I mean, you never know, but if it's in a financial institution like ours, it's, it's easier for you to access it. You know that it's secure. While it's sitting there, you're earning a bit of interest as well, making money for yourself in the process. Mm. All right. So let's talk about the, the fees that will actually be um, involved in these accounts. Let's say, how does one select? Because, you know, it, it, it's important for the, the client or whoever is trying to save have to be aware of the fees. Let's talk about the fees involved when you, when you deposit or when you need to, to withdraw or just the monthly charges of the, uh, on, on, on the bank accounts that you are um, recommending. Yeah, so, so, so like I mentioned, uh, when you look at, I'll start with the fixed deposits. Our fixed deposits don't really have uh, many fees. There's only one fee. Let's say you've committed that you'll save the money with us for 12 months, then you you break uh, the deposit uh, halfway through the tenor, there's a small penalty fee that you incur. Other than that, there, mm -hmm. there, are, no, uh, there are not any other fees uh, in our fixed deposits. When you look at our coquetto savings, we believe that savings shouldn't be costly. That's why we don't have any management monthly management fees. That's why we don't have any deposit fees. That's why we don't even charge you to keep track of your transactions. The only charge yeah. we have is the penalty fee. The penalty fee is there to help you keep yourself honest so that you don't keep taking money from your account every month. So that's the only charge yeah. that we do apply on our pocket so account. Okay. All right. Um, so, you know, do you have, I think, I think we have actually covered quite a lot about um, savings and, and the importance of it and how you can do it. And, you know, Wabo has also given you the solutions um, that you can tap into, uh, into Stemic. I don't know if you would like to share anything else as we're wrapping up our conversation, Wabo. Yeah, so like you mentioned, I mean, we've touched on a lot of things. I think the, the most important things for, for us is, you know, we're, we're living in, in, in very uncertain times. Uh, so in this uncertain times, you know, we need to get creative in how we actually, you know, secure our futures. So it is important that, you know, uh, people save. We believe that saving is very important. Uh, the importance of saving comes from you being honest with yourself, sit down, just look at your situation, develop goals. Uh, if you want to get out of the situation you are in or you want to better your life, goals are very important. Once you have that, uh, you know, spend a lot of time developing yourself uh, mentally and also from a knowledge perspective so that you know you're able to make the right financial decisions for you. Uh, we believe in financial health and uh, people prospering. So those are the last words that I wanted to share with yourself. And All the right. viewers. Okay. Yes. Now, where can one um, start with, with uh, basically now say you want to now, you know, contact, contact Stembic. I am ready to save. I've managed our, you know, to, to get my goals, reduce my costs. Where does one start? Where, is there a website? Can we open the savings account on website? Can we phone? Where does one start? Where, who do we call? And what number should we call if they need to call? Thank you very much. So, so for, for more information, you can go to our website, uh, which is www.stambicbank.co.bw, or you can call our contact center, which is 398-7801. And most importantly, we're currently running a campaign, a Coquetso Savings campaign, where we are trying to give back to our to our clients and trying to promote this, the, the the culture of savings. There's hundred hundred thousand pula that we have set aside uh, during the life of the campaign. We'll be will be giving uh, our our people who open accounts. Uh, they'll be winning uh, five thousand pula, about two winners every week. So this is us now giving back to say. Uh, in our commitment to help you save, uh, those lucky winners uh, who meet uh, the terms and conditions, two of them weekly will receive uh, 5,000 Pula prizes each. 
All right. Oh, that's 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 a nice campaign. <laughs> I would get onto it right away just for me to be able to save. That's, that's, that sounds like a good one. Thank you so much, Wabo, uh, for coming to Surrey TV. We appreciate this conversation. We appreciate you and Stambik um, for you know talking about such valuable information for um, the viewer out there. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Much appreciated. All right. All right. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye for now.